Hi, this is Scott Kilos here, 6 Delta Alpha Yankee, and for today's video we're taking a look at the Quan Sheng UVK5. Uh, this has been out for a bit and a lot of people have uh, been kind of excited about this because it represents kind of a, a unique departure from the normal cheap Chinese radio formats that you uh, you see out there. Now let me, before I even start to review, let me make something very, very clear. Um, this channel is focused on MCOM radios, emergency communications, and using radios in harsh outdoor environments and, and things of that nature. So we tend to look at radios that are, that are rugged, weather protected, uh, kind of higher end radios. And those are what I recommend for emergency communications. But I also recommend or recognize that emergency communications is just a small part of amateur radio overall and that a lot of us like to just have radios that are hobby grade radios that we can mess around with. This radio as well as any of the other cheap Chinese radios because to be completely honest with you I don't I have not encountered a single radio less than fifty dollars that I would trust uh, as a communications device to affect a rescue for myself or someone else. Uh, it, I just don't want to take that risk. I put a higher value on that on that communications capability. So I use higher end radios when times, you know, when there's some danger element involved. But I also like to just mess around and talk to people on the radio and I use a variety of different radios for doing that. And this is a hobby grade fun radio. That's what we're talking about today. Don't get confused. Don't think, I, I do not recommend things like Baofeng UV5Rs and stuff like that for emergency communication. That's nuts. They're, they're okay, but I don't trust them that much. Uh, but the Quan Sheng, interesting thing about this radio is that whoever designed this really put some effort into making this a genuinely unique radio. And I appreciate that and I respect that a great deal. This is really something interesting and I'm sort of hoping that this company gets enough support that they're able to kind of push forward and start making some better and better radios. Because I don't, I don't consider all Chinese radios to be junk. Uh, I don't consider all Chinese radios to be unworthy of emergency communications purposes. There are some Chinese radio brands out there that are pretty damn good. Ocean is one of them. Anytone is one of them. Um, so there, there is some good kit that you can buy. Um, and I'm hoping that this becomes a company that goes in that direction, that they're able to get enough support and they be able to take whoever engineered this radio and give him a little bit more leeway to build some extra features in there. And I can see a company like this moving forward and putting out something that's like an IP67 heavy duty radio with an excellent battery and some of the features in this radio. I'm waiting for that. So I'm going to support this company until that point and see where they go with it because uh, I think they got a future if whoever designed this radio is allowed to, allowed off the leash a little bit. Uh, so we'll see. But when I say this is different, it's it's not just another Baofeng. And, and you'll see comparisons and you'll see people mention that this is a Baofeng killer. And uh, it could be. Uh, they're about the same price point. Uh, this is about 27 bucks and this is 28 bucks. So they're right in the same ballpark in terms of uh, outlay of cash. But in terms of what this radio can do versus what this radio can do, it's pretty darn dramatic. There are a couple of expansion features that the UV5R has, uh, such as the extended battery, which may or may not be a benefit. Um, but beyond that, uh, what you can do with this radio, especially in terms of like the menu and stuff, um, this already does, well, as I get into the features, it'll become super apparent. But like I said, it's not another 128 channel Baofeng board put in just another different chassis, which is what you see a lot with Baofeng. I do understand some Baofengs have variable power levels and some Baofengs have more channel selections, but for the most part, they're all just kind of the same radio, whether it's a UV5R, a UV82, a UV9R, a GT3WP, a uh, AR152, all sort of the same thing. Now, what people have been doing the past couple of years is that if they want to be different, they'll buy this platform as an OEM. So you got that radio by TYT. You get this radio by Redivus. They're exactly the same radio internally. The only thing different is what the outside looks like. Then you got a GMRS version, which uh, GM30 I'm not a big fan of. Or you got like this really craptastic, uh, rugged uh, GMR2 all kind of the same radio. 
Some of them not not necessarily bad for what they are, um, given the price and given what they do. They're they're okay as inexpensive uh, radios, but they're nothing compared to to this thing. So, without further ado, let me jump into what the UVK5 is. And the UVK5, in in a nutshell, is a dual band analog HD with a 200 channel memory capacity. So, um, not really that far off from the Redivis RT85. They, that's kind of the same thing. If it's stopped there, then we just kind of go, okay, well, which one feels more rugged? Which one might be better? But uh, the K5 is going to start pulling out some party pieces that you're not going to see in a radio of, of this price point. Um, so let me talk first off about how it comes set up from the factory. So it comes set up for uh, current FCC regulations so that you can only transmit in, uh, and because it is dual band, it's VHF, UHF. So for transmit, you have 144 to 148 megahertz for VHF. And for UHF, 420 to 450 megahertz. So pretty standard stuff so far. On reception, the usual 136 to 174 um, megahertz. And then you have your uh, um, 400 to 520 is usually what it is. But there's more, and I am going to point something out real quick. When it comes to manuals, this manual is pretty darn abbreviated. And usually you can find out what your what your received frequencies are um, here. And I guess our, our best indication right here is this column. And so let me list out all of the areas in which you can get reception on this. So again, pretty standard stuff. So 100 and uh, 136 to 174, 174 to 340, 300 and, or 350 rather, uh, 350 to 400, 400 to uh, so it's it's different different reception categories here, um, so all pretty standard stuff. So 136 to uh, roughly 500, no 600, um, you're good to go. Then you also have uh, your typical FM reception, 76 to 108. Um, nothing notable there, but this is the this is the line I want you to pay real close attention to, 108 to 136. What 108 to 136 megahertz is is aircraft. It's airband. So this little $28 radio will receive airband. And as far as I know, I don't think there's any other radios within this category that you can do uh, airband reception on. Now, there's some debate out there as to exactly how well this will do that. Uh, this receives airband just fine. I'm a couple miles away from an airport, and I, I can listen in with, with no problem. It's not terribly clear with the factory antenna. And as I'm going to discuss in a little bit, this antenna um, is one of the things that I genuinely do not like about this radio. It's a very poorly designed antenna. So you're not going to, you're not going to get great results with a factory antenna. And I think that's where some of the, some of the malign comments about this radio, and in, in, at least in, in regards to airband reception goes, I think that's where that comes from, is you're not using a proper antenna for it. So I'll talk more about that in a little bit. So, um, Pretty standard reception uh, with the with the addition of being able to do airbands. So that's a, a new party trick. Now another thing that's interesting about this is going to be the menu. And I'm going to depart from my normal way in which I do reviews by talking about this menu real fast because one of the questions that usually comes up on these is okay, it's locked. Anytime someone comes out with a new Chinese radio, one of the first questions that gets asked is how do you unlock it? How do you expand transmit? Because back in the bad old days, most of these Chinese radios came in uh, wide open. It was the Wild West back then, and you would get a, a typical Baofeng UV5R would come from the factory, uh, able to receive and transmit equally uh, between 136 and 174 and uh, 400 to 520. Um, and again, receive and transmit. FCC cracked down, and all of these radio companies are now locking their radios, but they make the unlock, unlock codes usually follow about the same time the radio is released. The UVK5 is no different, but the ability to unlock this thing and do a couple of other interesting things is, well, in and of itself, interesting. So let me show you how quick that or quick and easy that's done. So what you want to do is hold down the PTT and this first function button underneath the PTT. Hold those down and then turn the radio on. 
and you're going to see this menu setup, which is a departure from what you normally see in these radios. And I'll be cycling this up and down a lot, not for any reason, but other than the, uh, other than the fact that this thing times out really, really fast. Um, so I got to keep moving this, otherwise I'm going to have to turn it off and then turn it back on again. And I probably will have to do that. But the menu that it brings up is right here. Reset 350TX, F-Lock 200TX, 500TX, 350 EN. I don't know what 350 EN means, but the important parts here are as follows. F-Lock, it says FCC. What that is, is this is locked to the FCC uh, frequency restrictions for the amateur radio bands. In order to unlock this radio so that it could transmit uh, conceivably um, on uh, MERS and GMRS and other areas such as that, all you simply do is press the M key and the arrow now moves over to the right side of the screen and you move the arrow up and you move that too and you here we're cycling through some different countries so we got I believe that's China and Europe and then we got Great Britain and then we got 430 and I think it was 438 uh, and then you have off what you want to do is just move it to off press the menu and then well actually let me uh, let me do something here let me show you what it looks like without this done so let's go ahead and move this back to uh, FCC. So FCC, we're going to select and then we're going to hit exit. So if I go to VFO, and this is your first little clue on this, everything off of the FPP for your function keys here, and if you'll note, you see the little uh, sub functions for each of the numbered keys. I press the F and I press 3, and that takes me to VFO mode. Pretty simple stuff. So it brings up 462.700, which is a GMRS frequency. If I go ahead and key down, it says disabled, so it will not transmit. So let's uh, go ahead and turn the radio off. Let's get back into that menu again. Bring it back up. So let's go down to F-Lock menu, move it to off menu, exit. Now, if I go to transmit, it transmits. So that's how quickly and easily it is to unlock this. But let me show you something else that uh, you can unlock with this. So let's turn this back on. So you've got a couple of other things here. 350, so 350 TX is uh, apparently when you unlock this, you can transmit on everything 350 and above. Um, uh, that's not particularly useful for anything that I'm aware of. So the, the relevant um, frequencies above 350, it's already unlocked to transmit on. But this one right here, 200 TX. So let me... Um, let me back out of this one more time and show you something. So if I punch in 223420, that is 1.25 meter. Okay, so the, your tri band radios are going to be 2 meter, 1.25 meter, and 70 centimeter. This comes from the factory as 2 meter and 70 centimeter. So what happens if I key down now? It's just disabled. Even though I've unlocked the radio, it won't let me do. 1.25 meter. So let's go ahead and go back to that menu and let's unlock 200 and above. So I go to 200, hit menu, and I want to turn that on, hit menu, and exit. Now 223.400 allows me to transmit. However, don't get too excited about this. The, tr the power ratings on this, basically high power is, and, and that's really what most of us are con concerned with. What's the high power rating on this? Five watts. And this thing tests out at five watts. It will do five watts pretty effectively. Uh, both, uh, and it does it pretty reliably between VHF and UHF without much drop off at all. You're going to be right at five watts. But when you go to transmit on 1.25 meter with this, it's only about a half a watt. So nothing to get too terribly excited about there. I'm sorry, I hope, hope you've been able to hear this up to this point. I just moved my mic. I realized it had uh, drooped down. But uh, getting back to 1.25 meters. So it'll do 1.25 meter, but sadly it won't do it at 5 watts. I found that a little disappointing, but it'll do it nonetheless. So let's get out of VFO and let's, um, 
with that quick departure, and I think you get kind of an idea what the internals on this radio are, let's go ahead and do a walk around. And as topics come up, I'll talk about them as I get to each point and feature here. Um, but going to the top of the radio where we always start, we have a pretty big on off switch uh, volume control knob here and it's got this orange which I'm not a huge fan of I don't like the color orange for reasons that I don't really want to illustrate here but it is interesting um, there's no knurling but uh, it it's a little grippy I don't think it's it's not rubber it's plastic but uh, pretty easy knob to turn it's got good built-up protection here it comes off the side of the radio I don't know if they're going for a style point there or, or not I really don't understand all of this um, but it exists nonetheless. It really doesn't protect anything here. When you have a speaker mic in, it's not really doing anything to, to help. You can still get a speaker mic in and it'll still clear this, but it's going to be right up against the side of it. But uh, as knobs go, it's it's all right. Um, the the detent for the on-off capability is, is fairly sturdy enough. There's the uh, obligatory flashlight at the top. I do not have a key set for this. Um, and I'll talk about that when I get to talking about the function keys here. Moving to this antenna. Now this is the factory antenna. As I mentioned earlier, I don't like this antenna and I don't like it a lot. Um, give you a quick anecdotal experience with this antenna. Turn the radio on with a factory antenna. And even with, and, and I do comparisons, I always have a, I always have a, um, uh, another radio going at the same time that's you know a, a trusted radio so that I can compare the reception capabilities. So I have this other radio on the other side of the room and it's getting uh, certain certain transmissions are coming in full quieting and sounds nice but on this one every transmission no matter what came in with hiss and, and bacon noise on top of the the signal. Um, I and I'm going to attribute that to the antenna because um, one of the first things that I did once I noticed that pretty much everything I was I was messing with had static on it, I could hear. I mean, I was I was getting I was getting the information, but it wasn't uh, it wasn't pleasant on the ear. So as I normally do, one of the first things I want to do on a, on a radio that has a, a problem antenna is put on either a Nagoya NA701 or NA771. I put a 771 on this antenna, and this thing immediately came alive. And it came alive in a couple of important aspects. It came alive in terms of the regular amateur radio band stuff. It came alive on the aircraft band as well. It really brought those signals in real nicely. Uh, it didn't clean it up entirely. It's still not the greatest receiver because it is a direct conversion receiver and it's probably uh, probably has kind of a weak front end like most of these radios do so I was picking up some other other um, other nonsense on the signal but I'm going to recommend if you buy this radio if you don't already have and I have a big old box of different antennas that have pulled off of other radios and I have a lot of these Nagoya antennas laying around um, throw a replacement antenna on this as quickly as possible. You're going to appreciate the upgrade and it's going to be helpful to you. So moving to the side of the radio here, I have this on. The PTT is nice. Um, one of my complaints about most of the Chinese radios is that the switchery is kind of dubious and uh, uh, they just don't fill you with positivity. The Beofangs in particular have really crappy PTTs on them. Um, this has a nice PTT. It's not pivoted uh, anywhere you press. There's no there's no real dead spots on it, so it's easy to hit, easy to find. Beneath that, you have two function keys that are programmable, and they're programmable for a long and a short press. Um, and there's a number of different things that you can program into this. What I have programmed in is the upper button short press is scan. And on the lower button, short press is Mani. Uh, I don't have a long press uh, programmed into either of these, and I don't have the flashlight programmed. And I'm still trying to figure out a, a way in which I want to work that, because um, if I put the flashlight on on either of these buttons, uh, it's going to interfere with scan. I just want a short press for scan. I don't want a whole lot of nonsense there. If I put the flashlight on that as a long press, if I don't press it long enough, it starts scan. It's going to, it's clunky. I prefer, I like the radios that have a button at the top that I can program to turn the flashlight on. Uh, and I don't, in, in this thing, in this case, I'm probably never going to use the flashlight on this. So it's just not that big a deal. Now moving to the front of the radio. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the display real quick. And I'm going to turn the lights off because I want to point something out to you. And again, uh, talking about how uh, Quan Cheng is really swinging for the fences in terms of putting as many cool little features into this radio as they possibly can. The um, 
the display, one of the things I want you to note here, and I'll wait for this to time out, is illuminated keys. Now this is something you don't see. And let me, uh, you don't see this a lot on inexpensive radios. Generally, you'll have a you have your illuminated display, but the keys will just be they'll just be colored white. Uh, you won't actually have illuminated keys. The display is nice. Uh, it's easy to easy to read. It's a um, let me turn this on scan real quick. See if we can pick up any traffic. So. One thing you'll note, uh, the timeout on this is pretty quick. The maximum amount uh, you have available to you, I believe, is five seconds. So on activation, this, the screen will illuminate, stay on for five seconds, and it turns off. The odd thing is, and I don't know why it does this, um, it might be a menu thing that I haven't found, but the when it scans, the display stays on the entire time. Do not know why. Um, but again, this gives us a, a good chance to look at those really cool illuminated keys, which I think is an interesting touch, again, for a $28 radio. That's kind of cool. Now, let me go ahead and turn the lights back on, and I'll talk about some of the uh, some of the function keys and some of the cool stuff you can do on this. And we'll talk a little bit about the menu, which is another interesting surprise. So let me get these all turned on. All right, we're good to go. So let me exit out of this scan real quick. There we are. Now, the, um, the, the function keys here and, and the keys, of course, we, you already noticed the menu keys, this big M right here, uh, prominent, easy to see, easy to find. There's a nice exit key, which I like. You have your up down arrow keys for your menu selections and also for your channels. That's fine. Now, moving down to the, the keys at the bottom, as I mentioned, the F key is going to kind of start everything in terms of the shortcuts. For instance, if I wanted to move, between my A and my B band, it's F, A, and B. Now, that is a bit of a back step from, uh, for instance, the UV5R. You just press the A, B button and you're good to go. So in this one, you do have to, you do have to hit the, that F key first. If I want to move from VFO to memory mode or back, is that it only affects the, the active line. So I'm still in memory mode on the bottom line and I'm in frequency mode on the top line. Move that back. Of course, we do have a scan key here. Um, you can also switch between your bands, so everything's pretty nicely laid out. I have no objections there, but I want to talk, to, talk about the menu here and just show you some of the selections in the general menu. Of course, we've got squelch, we've got our steps and transmit power. Uh, you've got all your usual stuff for setting up your repeaters, and um, pretty easy to find. You can set up a wide or narrow band, and busy channel lockout, moving on down. That's our backlight, actually. Uh, toggle dual dual receive. Uh, now, TDR is actually not dual receive. It's dual watch. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, something here. Let me see here if I can find it real quick. Mic level. Uh, another thing that a lot of the cheap Chinese radios don't allow you to do is set your mic gain. This will allow you to set mic gain. Nice. Really swinging for the fences again. So coming back out here, um, talking about that dual watch versus dual display, it's dual display. And what this means is if I have active traffic coming through on the A band, um, even if I have active traffic come through on the B band, you won't hear it. The second this drops out, that will activate and you'll hear that and you'll hear that until it drops out, then you'll hear this. So it's, um, it's again, you're not going to be able to work satellites with this thing, but that is a function. You also do have the ability to go to a single line display with this as a menu function. So the menu is, is feature rich. Now you can obviously program in all 200 of the memory channels from the front panel and it's easily done. It's not a problem at all. If you've ever done it with a Beofang, you can easily do it with this one. But I want to talk for a second about the, the programming software for this radio. It is supported by Chirp, but I believe the current version, and that is as of this week, um, when I, I, I downloaded the latest build of Chirp Next, and they had this listed, when I read this radio to Chirp, it showed nothing. All it showed was um, the menu selection panel, but there was no menus that were shown, so it downloaded nothing from the radio, and there was no nothing in, in regards to the settings. It was very bare bones, and I don't think it's functioning. So I can't I can't say that Chirp currently supports this radio. They'll eventually sort it out. I've seen them do this before. For instance, with the FT 
think it was the FT65. They had a version, but it was sort of, it was missing some features, and after a while they fixed that. So over time, I think they'll get it right. But the factory software on this, again, swinging for the fences, these guys are. The factory software on this is really super interesting. If you've ever dealt with the factory software for the Anytone ATD878UV or the uh, TYT MD380, it's similar to that. It's uh, uh, it's neat. I, I, I wasn't bothered by it at all. I liked it. It runs well. It's very well laid out. Um, you have full control over the radio. You can do a lot of really interesting things to the radio. Um, and it's, it's a pretty effective tool. So um, don't hesitate to download from, from the website here. And I'll, I'll, I'll try to put a link in the description for where to find the software and also the firmware update. Uh, this radio can be updated by firmware because it does have a USB-C connection on the side. And I'll talk about that right now. So getting to the USB-C, you move that little rubber port cover out of the way and there's your USB-C connection for firmware updates and also to charge the radio because this will charge via USB-C. It also comes with a cradle charger as well. People love that option and there you go. The speaker mic itself is a standard K1 type plug so to use Kenwood speaker mics as well as all of the Beofang and other Chinese radio speaker mics that feature that, uh, that two pin connection um, with a K1 type layout. Uh, it also will work with a Beofang UV5R programming cable. Uh, which is what I use to program this radio up and hook it up to the CPS. There's another plus. Now let's go to the back side, look at the battery. The battery latches at the bottom, you just simply push it and pivot it out. The battery itself is a 1600 milliamp battery. Now I don't know what kind of tech they got in this battery, but I'm going to have to rave on it for a little bit. I charged this thing three days ago and I have been using it uh, on scan Mo I, for the first two days, I had this thing on scan just to just to see what the, the signal quality was almost all day for both days. And it started out at 8.34 volts and it's still, well, let's see what our voltage is, still 7.94. Uh, and I, I've done some signal reports with this as well, so I've actually done some, some transmitting with it. So this battery has amazing life. Uh, again, I, I don't... I don't know how they did it, uh, that or it could simply be that it's not reading right. Uh, I will, I'll probably later today pull the meter out and actually, actually uh, uh, see, what, see what kind of voltage I've got on the contacts here. But um, yeah, not, not a bad battery at all. And here's another interesting little party piece. And they sort of borrowed something from ICOM. Uh, ICOM has these neat belt clips that just snap in and out without having to use screws. They've done the same thing. Now it's kind of in a diminished um, Chinese copycat variety, but it works. The belt clip comes on and off quite easily. And uh, myself, I tend, to, I tend to vacillate between belt clip, no belt clip quite a lot. Um, there are times, particularly in hobby radios, um, I run belt clips a lot on hobby radios. I don't on MCOM radios. I just pouch those. But it's kind of nice having the option to be able to take that on and off without having to find a screwdriver. So that's that. It battery inserts just by lock, uh, catch the two tabs at the top with the chassis and then rock it in and lock it in place. Simple as that. So all together, an interesting little radio uh, with a lot, of, a lot of cool features. Now let's talk about one thing that's uh, not terrific. So I talked about the antenna being not terrific. The only other thing on this that is really not terrific at all is the speaker. Uh, the speaker is unimpressive. It is thin. It is, uh, it is uncomfortable on the ear. Uh, it's not a heck of a lot of fun. Let's see if I can get some noise out of this. I was hoping on scan earlier I could, uh, I could get something going on there. So let's see if we can get any kind of signal on this. It's a quiet morning here, so uh, a lot of people are at work and uh, not doing anything today. So let me kill this for a second. Yeah, it's really kind of hard to tell from Monty because Monty always sounds like crap no matter what. Um, maybe later I'll, I'll, I could do a separate audio test on this, but just take it from me. It's, it's not terrific. Now, there's some things you can do to change that. Um, you could put a quality speaker mic in here and that would, uh, that would improve the situation a little bit. But like I said, it's, it's not terribly impressive.
but you can hear it. Um, I, I'll say that uh, it's it's not super low. It'll turn up it'll turn up loud enough to be heard in a room amongst some other noises and whatnot. Um, but yeah, so the two things I don't like about it, the speaker and the, and the antenna, the antenna is easily replaced and the speaker, if I really wanted quality audio, I could just put a, a decent speaker mic in like a calm mountain and I'd be fine. Sounds, sounds okay at that point. But as a fun little interesting radio, as a first radio, that if you're looking to test the waters and have a little bit more, a uh, little bit more well, more features, of course, but uh, just be a little bit more interesting than a typical Beofang. This is not half bad. This may end up being my giveaway radio. Um, I sometimes will will acquire a certain number of radios of a certain type that I have on hand. Just if, if someone needs a radio, uh, you can hand them out. Or if someone I know has, has gotten their ticket and I want to hand them some, just toss them one of these. Um, some clubs do that, in fact. Uh, there are clubs that will buy a big old batch of bale fangs, and when someone tests, uh, they get their ticket and they get a radio at the same time. This wouldn't be a half bad radio for that purpose. So with that, I'll go ahead and bring it to an end. Um, I've talked enough about this, but following on with this, I will do an output power test so you can see what this thing will do on 2 meter, 70 centimeter, as well as 1.25, and also uh, the power output in regards to out-of-band transmissions such as GMRS. So with that, like I said, bring it to an end. Thank you for watching and or listening. This is Scott, Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee in Southwest Visalia, California. And real quick, uh, if you've stayed this long, uh, give you a reminder that SpectreGear.com is my day job and patronage there keeps the lights on here and allows me to do videos like this. So please visit us at SpectreGear.com for things such as radio pouches as well as uh, magazine pouches, tactical slings, etc. So um, thank, thank you very much for watching and have a wonderful day.